Yeah, go ahead. Have you looked at um, not just other mobile phone platforms to integrate this with, but other um, GPS solutions like Dash? I know Dash is moving mm -hmm. out of the consumer market now. Right. There's others actually moving into that market. As right. Well. So um, are you looking at integrating some kind of widgets or other items that could mm -hmm. load up in the GPS solution so the driver just pushes a button? And yeah, I mean, that button. that's, um, uh, there is, what is, there's a few companies, um, uh, GPS-based companies, uh, that uh, this would be a perfect application for them, right? I mean, you need to know, you know, where the next McDonald's or the next gas station is. You may want to know where the nearest participator is for your particular route. So that would, yeah, that, that's a kind of um, uh, partnership that <coughs> makes a lot of sense for us. So, you know, our, our philosophy is, is that uh, our server, the way we designed it has, you know, you, you interact with that through APIs and the iPhone is just another client as far as the server is concerned. So whether it's a Facebook client or whether it's a widget or, uh, you know, a website or a, a GPS device, it doesn't, doesn't, uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the, basically, I, I think the issue is the audit uh, audit trail for that. And um, uh, certainly when we're talking to companies, we're talking about uh, uh, that type of solution. And uh, we haven't educated ourselves yet as far as what the credits are, uh, you know, what, what the, the details are in order to, to, to get some revenue from the government. Um, the thing is that the government, doing anything with the government, whether it's local, state, federal, is a, an excruciatingly slow process. <laughs> Uh, so it's one of those things that um, we're looking for more, more me immediate kills than than uh, that that uh, that beast. Yes. I think I'll know when you're successful, and that's when I drive home at rush hour. Eighty percent of the cars are in the carpool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, with a participate sticker. Yeah, on their car. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What's the motivation that we have? What's yeah. the motivation you envision for a person to offer up? A ride? Is it they're just nice? They're well, I mean, there's the, the there's a financial motivation, uh, and then there is a saving gas motivation. So financial, um, just to kind of like on the phone, they agree you're going to give me ten bucks. Yeah, I mean, we we imagine that you can put in in your profile that you can put in uh, a a cent per mile. Uh, you know, estimator, you just put in 25 cents a mile. Now, when we route it, Google, you, through the Google APIs, you can get the route information, you know, it's 37.5 miles. We just multiply that and then we could present in your, in your, in your result here um, that um, we can just present that, you know, the expectation here is $5.30 or something like that. And, but again, it's up to you to negotiate that with... Uh, but that would be, if you put that price, is that, are you going to be like that Canadian company then? Um, well, we may not have to make it available in Canada, but to be honest with you, I think the PR that that company gets probably is worth more than that 11,000 fine, so, you know, maybe I don't have a problem with that either. Go ahead. Again, a serious comment to follow up what I said. Mm -hmm. I drive a lot uh, alone in rush hour. Yeah. So the incentive to me is not to get ca gas money from somebody to be able to use a carpool bike. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Well, the, I don't know if you guys know, it, this is actually a legacy after the 1987 Loma Prieta earthquake that there were carpool lanes set up both sides of the bay. And if you go on Beale Street in San Francisco, um, uh, between like Howard, I think, and uh, exactly, I forgot what the cross street, I think it's uh, Harrison or Howard. Um, but there, there are signs for Oakland, uh, Piedmont, Cla you know, uh, all the way to Richmond, to Pittsburgh, and people just line up at the various signs and people uh, 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 stop by, pick people up, and, the, and they have uh, similar uh, pickup points at the other side of the bay, and the motivation there is not to save gas, but just to get in the the commuter lane. And uh, yeah, that's been going on almost 20 years. And actu actually, we go there, and I, I, you know, when I'm in San Francisco around that time, commute time, I just go down up and down Beale Street. Hey, you have an iPhone? You have an iPhone? They kind of look at me <laughs> weird, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I get five or six people to sign up. That's a, but it, that's a perfect um, uh, scenario there. Yeah, toll bridges too. You'll find that uh, people are stopping at the bus stops. Um, the last bus stops before the toll bridges, picking up passengers, mm -hmm. and just getting across the bridges free and yeah. saving, saving the passengers the bus fare. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I mean a lot of people there actually, because I talked to some people that uh, are waiting in line and just ask them what the motivation is, and some of those are are. Um, uh, 
there are people that want to save money on BART. You know, for them, a $4 BART trip to Berkeley, that's, you know, that's enough for them to wait for an hour to, to get a ride. So, um, so a lot of those people don't necessarily are iPhone users, but there's a few there. So. Uh, how are we doing on time? Okay. Um, well, I guess I could. Uh, well, I could show. I guess I'd show that real quick. Um, so the idea with Facebook is whatever you do um, on your profile on your phone, uh, you can manage your profile. You can manage your locations um, all on um, uh, on Facebook. So now, uh, when we launch Facebook, the idea here is that we don't restrict people to participate or only have iPhones. Now it's going to be anybody with you know, access to a computer. So what's going to follow another week or two is also a web-based version of this particular um, uh, interface. And, um, and so if you post a ride, if you change your profile, your locations, it'll basically reflect on your iPhone and vice versa. So that's kind of a, because there's a lot of things that um, we may want to do as far as writing about, you know, the about for yourself. That's kind of a pain on your iPhone. So managing the app on your desktop is, um, is easier. All righty. So is there any more questions then? We'll go to the next speaker. Are you doing mapping in the app? Uh, no, we're not. Um, you can you click on the button to? Yeah, I can't demo this because. You, can, you still can. Oh, let me see here. Well, you can route a person's. Uh, okay, here we go. Now it'll. This will show up on the client, but if you do it on the iPhone, it'll uh, open up Google, Google Maps. Only thing is, you have to then exit the map, uh, the application, and re-enter participate, which is. You know, not ideal, but the mapping something is uh, the mapping fun function is something that we looked at. But since from a licensing issue, you can't embed a, a mapping information uh, in the app. You have to do that in WebView, and that's doable but painful. So it's one of those things that we haven't put ourselves through yet. Thanks. Okay. Well, thank you very much.